If you are an investor in Tampa, Florida, you might, you might just be having an issue right now. And that issue is, there ain't no cash flow! That's what's happened to my client. I'm going to help him, and then I'm going to help you. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James. I'm going to help you out. Today, I'm working with my dude, Walter. Walter's an investor from Tampa, man. What's up, Walter? Now, Walter, you are brand spanking new to the game, brother. And uh, we've gone back and forth with a few emails here. And uh, we had another building, right? It was like a six-unit apartment building. You were interested in that one because you told me you're interested in quads, but you're also interested in things that are a little bit bigger, right? Uh, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is financing, okay? Uh, from my experiences with you, it sounds like you're incredibly green to the business. And that's cool, bro. I'm not saying that to be negative, right? Uh, if everybody out there knew everything about real estate and more specifically about the real estate that I sell, it wouldn't really be any uh, reason for you to pay me money, right? So uh, that's what I'm here, man. I'm here to help you, right? You're in Tampa. You want to buy cheaper cash flowing properties, right? So we're going to be looking at cheaper markets than Tampa. That's number one. Number two, you were talking about uh, quads and then like small apartment buildings, right? You were talking to me about that six unit building and uh, you have 80K to work with. You want to use that as a down payment, right? So what I did is I set you up with my list of lenders, right? All my commercial lenders uh, and you're going to work with them to see the type of financing products you can get. Uh, but digging deeper than that, bro, with you being kind of green to the business, kind of green to financing, uh, I think it's probably in your best interest for you to focus your first investments on properties that are going to qualify for residential financing, right? That's a more clean, clear, easy cut product than the commercial financing product, right? So you're talking to those investors, but that's going to be a much more complicated process than it's just straight up 25% down right? If you have good credit, good income, and can cover the cost of that mortgage, you're good on that loan, right? 25% low interest, fixed interest, right? 30-year loans. That's the best product, right? When I think investors, when I see investors just getting started in the game, you can get 10 of those mortgages, right? I think the best thing to do is burn the first one on your personal house, man. Walt, you got to take care of home base first. I believe you've done that, right? That leaves you with nine other mortgage opportunities, right? You're going to run out of cash. You're going to run out of 80K in cash before we utilize those nine. So that's what I would probably do first before I focused on anything above four units. So with that said, uh, you should really widen out your search to duplexes, triplexes, and quads. There's a very small amount of quads in the, the Cleveland market that we're going to be looking at, right? There's just not that many available, right? Uh, we have a little bit of triplexes, but mostly we have a lot of duplexes. Luckily, though, brother, I got a triplex that I think would be perfect for you, and it's really going to solve your issue, right? Your issue is you're in Tampa. And you just can't find any cash flow, right? There's no cash flow in Tampa. You can't get a three-unit apartment building in Tampa with this type of returns. You can't get in for this type of price. So it's all going to make sense. I'm going to go over the pros, the cons, the neighborhood, the whole shebang for you, brother, right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and connect with motivated sellers nationwide. Welcome back. We are going to jump into those numbers right now. All right. Seven days on the market. 10718 St. Mark Ave, Cleveland 44111. First thing I want to talk about, let's just talk about the neighborhood, right? We don't even got to worry about talking about the property just yet. Let's talk about the neighborhood. C grade neighborhood. I have friggin' hundreds of these types of properties in this neighborhood. Solid earners. You can do Section 8. You can do cash. It's your call. This portion, right, multifamilies in this neighborhood are flying off the friggin' shelf, okay? Duplexes priced like this, bringing in friggin' 
Whatever rents they're bringing in doesn't even really matter. They are selling at or above list price within days, okay? Duplex units like this, because this is a duplex with a third floor conversion. The duplex units, the market rents, man, they're 750 right? And as far as the top one, yeah, it's smaller. You get like uh, probably like, I don't know, 500 I'd say, right? So if you look at a rent roll for this one, you're looking at 750 750 500 2K a month, 24K a year, right? So just duplexes without that third floor, right? Market rent's 1500 This price, they're flying off the shelves immediately. Multiple offers. This one still shows active, and it's got the third unit. And it's been on the market seven days. Why? What's the problem? There ain't no problem. What you got here is you got a seller who's clearly trying to create a bidding war. As such, 109900 this neighborhood for that much in market rent. No friggin' way. Not going to happen, folks. We have to go above and beyond. I think to have a shot at taking this thing down, you're going to need to spend 120 At 120 right, with the market rent of 2 Gs, I anticipate you having a yearly NOI average of 11290 right? That goes over your fixed and variable expenses, your repairs, your maintenance, your vacancy, your non-payment, your CapEx, right? The big ticket items, you got to save for those, right? So I've got 1200 a year for each of those three things, right? When people are living there, there's usually not that many repairs, but you know, you're going to get turnover repairs, right? And that's going to be like two, three, four, five grand at a pop, right? So as you're bringing that money home, you don't want to pretend like it's just a return. No, you got to save that because eventually you're getting a turnover. That's part of the business, right? Vacancy and non-payment. It's C-grade investing, man. Yeah, it makes us money, but dude, you have to understand at some point, people aren't going to pay rent. You're going to have to evict them. At some point, people are going to move, right? That's just how it works. Capital expenditures, right? Roofs. It's like a $7,000 roof on a building like this, right? They last 30 years. So every 30 years, you're spending 7 Gs. Every 30 years, you're spending 3 grand on a furnace. Every 15 years, you're spending a grand on a hot water tank. So we're covering, calculating all that in, right? So a true return should be 11290 right? And this is where it gets good, right? Residential financing. Best game in town, man. 30-year mortgages. Fixed interest, right? Get 10 of these suckers, right? Burn one on your personal property. Use nine on investment properties, right? So for the $120,000 purchase price, all you'd need to bring to the table would be 30 Gs. Bank kicks in 90 Gs, and this property would calculate out to an average estimated return of 23%. Now, that's with the market rents. We are not there yet, right? We have uh, three tenants in here already, okay? And they're paying a little bit lower, a lot lower, right? 300, 500, five and a quarter, right? So when you pick it up, you'll have these lower rents, right? Okay. That's why I think you only need to go 10 grand above list price here, okay? If it was already getting market rents, you'd have to go a lot more above that list price, right? As far as what it looks like, right? It's just normal C grade stuff, right? We got friggin' bajillions of these properties exactly like this in our portfolio. And, you know, Nothing out of the ordinary here. This is just normal, uh, you know, everyday C-grade neighborhood stuff, right? Here's your three updated electric panels, right? That's what you should be focused on, folks. That's the big ticket stuff, right? Those are upgraded. That's good. Laundry area for the tenants, three separate gas meters. This furnace, probably about 15 years old. So it's probably got about 15 years left, right? Maybe 15, 20 years, right? So, you know, plan to be fixing that in the next 10 years. And when, when I say fix, I really mean replace, right? Plan to be dropping that 3Gs, okay? Hot water tanks, I'd say probably in the next 5 to 10 years, you're replacing some of them, right? It's just, that's what it is, man. That's a, just a, a normal, solid, C-grade property, right? As far as these tenants go, you don't want to immediately remove all three of them to try to get those market rents. No, that wouldn't make any sense, right? Because those units, was there anything out of the normal? No. But guess what? You're not going to be able to rent those units to brand new people looking just like that. No, you got to clean it up. You got to repaint it, patch the holes, things of that nature, right? So you don't want to do that. You want to keep these people in the property as long as you possibly can. And the best way to do that is to slowly raise the rents, right? So with where they're at, okay, 500, five and a quarter, these are 750 units, $750 a month units, right? You don't have to go right to 750 but you don't have to give it to them for those prices forever. What I like to do, I think the best strategy, the strategy that's worked for me the best, and I see it work for my investors the best, is when we acquire the property, when we bring it into the Holton Wise portfolio, I like to get every tenant on a Holton Wise lease, and I like to leave their rents the same, even though they're ridiculously low. The reason I do this is there is no time you can go to evict somebody where you're at more of a disadvantage than when you go to evict somebody, it's the first month you've owned the property, you have no signed lease with them, 
with you as the owner, with you as the PM company, they've never paid you rent, right? What the tenants typically do, they always say, oh, I didn't know the property sold. I paid the old guy. Now, that don't mean they get to beat us. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we still win, all right? If we want to evict you, your ass is getting thrown out. But that makes the eviction cost a lot more, take a lot more, take a lot more time, right? So instead of like a normal, clear $750, you didn't pay, we kicked your fucking ass out eviction, you're looking at like a two, three, four thousand dollar eviction that gets stretched out into several court dates, right? Because the judge is always going to, uh, you know, make us delay it and give them opportunity. It's a whole mess, right? When you go to court, folks, you need a lease that says you're the landlord. These are the laws of the land. If they don't pay. It's clear. It's clean. It's easy. Those motherfuckers get kicked out. That's what you want, right? So what I like to do when we take it over, hey, man, I see your rents, this, this and this. Sign this lease with us. We'll keep everything the same. Just give you the ground rules. No increase in your rent. These people are going to be happy because they know they can't go somewhere else for 300 for 500 for five and a quarter. And you're going to be happy because you're protected. As soon as they don't pay that rent, their ass is out. Right? So you do that the first time. Then after that, start moving them up. Right? Moving them up the chain. Don't go right to 750 right now. 50, 75, 100. 25, 50, 75, 100. You know, whatever, you know, we're feeling at that time. Whatever we think makes the most sense, right? Because our goal should be to keep them in their paying, right? We should be doing as few unit turnovers as humanly possible, right? You take a kitchen, you get a tenant to live in a house for 15 years, guess what you don't have to do for 15 years? A kitchen renovation, right? If you have 15 tenants over the course of 15 years, guess what you're doing 15 times? You're painting the property 15 times, right? You don't want to do that. You're just you're burning money, right? So when we get three people all paying rent, that's an asset to us, and we can slowly work them up. Now, as investors, you guys, of course, can try to do things differently, but with my experience running friggin' thousands and thousands of tenants, I can tell you that at the end of the day, doing it that way puts more money in your pocket because the Big thing here, I can't stress this enough, is to reduce unnecessary turnover, right? Butts in our units is what gets us paid, not an increase of 50 or or $100 on this unit or that unit. No, we want to keep that money coming into us, right? We want to keep the cash flow coming and work people up to increase those profit margins over time. That's the type of stuff we do for you here at Holton Wise, folks. We'll be your on-the-ground team. We'll give you the insight. We'll give you the good, the bad, exactly how things play out, right? It's not all about just pie-in-the-sky stuff. No, it's about real-life experiences as investors and landlords, right? I've sold $200 million worth of properties like this, guys. 100 k a pop, okay? Do the math. That's a, lot, that's a lot of properties, right? I know what I'm talking about. We run the largest scattered site portfolio in the Cleveland market. So if that makes sense for you, you want to work with us in the same way, the clients who are already working with us do get your own set of personalized videos like this. Send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Give us your number. We could hop on the phone, talk to you about the process. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.